We're here today in One Angel Square in Manchester, which is our brand new office building. And the room we're in today is the wine tasting room. So we store in here all our current product listings and we also use the room for going through our quality control samples. Also looking at new product development and tasting through the samples that we are sent by suppliers to look for new innovation and new products that come into our customers on shelf. When I'm tasting wine, when I'm trying wine, when I'm talking to winemakers about the wines that, that I want in my range, I'm thinking about what does the customer want. Everybody's taste is different. That's why we have a range of over 350 wines within our larger stores to allow that big selection for people to find the, the right wine for them, the right occasion and the right, the right food match. The thing that attracts me to the co-op is its ethical values and particularly with wine we are the largest fair trade wine retailer in the world. For a wine to be fair trade accredited it means that a percentage of the retail price that a customer pays goes directly back to the producer that actually made the wine in the first place. It goes back into their communities and it helps to fund community-based projects. Our fair trade buyer, Ed Robinson, has just come back from La Riocana out in Argentina and to see firsthand a school project that's just been completed. It's a technical college uh, for 315 students, 70% uh, of which come from farming families in the region. We like to work long-term with winemakers and with wineries so they know what our expectation is in terms of quality uh, and they match up to that expectation. When I'm choosing wine to go with food, I always think about the country of origin that the food comes from and think about the history of the wines that come from the, those, those countries. And generally that's my main rule is the history has developed those wines to match up with the foods from those regions, from those countries. So if I'm having something which is from France or from Italy, then I think about a wine which comes from that, that country. The Carver is a fantastic sparkling wine from Spain, which goes great with the tapas from Spain. So chorizo, stuffed peppers, the olives here. You want something which is going to clean your palate and, and leave it refreshed, ready for the next mouthful of wonderful food. There's also the Malbec here. Now, it's, I brought that along as a really unusual combination because we've got some dark chocolate and you think red wine and dark chocolate, especially something which is, a, which is a dry red. Malbec's normally known to go great with steak and beef, but when you've got something that rich and soft in tannin, try it with dark chocolate. It leaves some wonderful flavors in the mouth. For me, being a, a, a lover of wine, swirling and, and smelling wine is, is probably more important than actual tasting the wine because your nasal senses are more sensitive than, than your mouth to any you know, issues or, or the quality of the wine. I think the easiest tip that I would pass on to anyone who's interested in making a bit more out of their bottle of wine is to get the temperature right. To serve white wine, ideally it's around about 11, 11 degrees, but I would say go with caution. Uh, serve it too cold rather than too warm because you can always allow it to warm up a bit, a bit later. Same, same with reds. I'd serve reds around about 16 degrees, but again, no harm in serving them a bit, a bit cooler if, uh, if you're unsure. There's lots of things to look out for. I suppose the most important thing is try and buy wine from a good vintage uh, and wine from a, a good producer. Um, and the classic regions like Bordeaux, Rioja, Burgundy, they tend to be the most reliable in terms of, of aging. I mean, most wine made today is ready for consumption when you pick it up off the shelf because that's what most people want. I would urge people to decant whatever wine they're drinking. A, if it's a decanter, it looks nice on the table, but more than anything, it aerates the wine. So even the most humble wine will appear a lot more flavoursome if it's had time just to be swirled around. Even, even in a jug and you can put it back in the bottle, but as long as the air's had time to, to properly get in with the wine and interact with it and it releases those flavours. We find it really important to have a huge range and a really big choice available to our customers. So I'd encourage everyone to go out there, explore and have fun with it.